Oh, Go hey, ahead. man, you're getting everything on the head. I'm going to ask you this question myself and then i from that point on after you answer my question we'll go to the chat if you guys have any questions please put them up we won't hold them much longer um but um if you have any comments i see Betty is already up so i'm going to highlight him in just a second and then but i want to say this <clears throat> china has a um a policy of non-interference but i think that should be limited with pakistan we see what the united states is doing with Imran Khan because he wants to orient, uh, um, push Pakistan more into the global south and, and, and cement Pakistan standing with China. Why isn't the Chinese government um, putting more pressure on the Pakistani military and all of those areas? Because this is a national security threat to China because the United, what the United States wants is more CIA bases there more military bases there, not to just um, go and fly drones into Afghanistan, but this is the underbelly of the Chinese uh, um, and the Russians. So why isn't it um, Russia and China exerting more political economic pressure on the Pakistani establishment to um, right this wrong and, and push the U.S. and Britain out of their former colony? Pakistan, uh, people have to realize, Pakistan actually has been a long-standing Western ally. From the very beginning, since independence, um, since the Indian partition uh, and the independence of India and Pakistan. Uh, in fact, in the 19, in, be, before the 1962 war between India and, and China, India had a friendly relationship with, uh, China had a friendly sh- relationship with India, but Pakistan was antagonistic toward China because pa- Pakistan was in the Western camp and it, its elite was a very, um, very anti-communist. But then 1960 war resulted in 180 degree term in the Pakistan elite. They suddenly switched to align with China because, you know, they saw... They saw uh, they can leverage China against a common enemy, India, and and since so since 1962, China Pakistan relationship have been steadily improving. It got to the point where you know now it says it's it's a, it's called the Iron Brotherhood. Uh, um, uh, but one of the thing with uh, with Pakistan is. Its military is always in control. It's, it's, it's the, the, the Pakistan military establishment remain in control almost since the beginning. And, and in Pakistan, unfortunately, military is the most functional part of the government. And, and so they, they have a lot of leverage in all sectors in, in Pakistan. And but w- I think the thing with Imran Khan, we we all seen with uh, U.S. ambassador uh, 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 that the, the leaked tape from the U.S. ambassador to Pakistan. The in U.S. definitely want Imran Khan out. You know that's a given uh, because Imran Khan was uh, saying stuff about getting close to Russia, about piloting an independent uh, policy for Pakistan. Now Pakistan is it's. In an interesting, because it was always at the forefront of the Cold War, right? During the Cold War, Pakistan was the front, uh, the, the at the front line. Um, in fact, United States, Saudi Arabia, um, uh, uh, but but mostly CIA, you know, pull up, pull out the Operation Cyclone, one of the largest CIA operation before uh, the the CIA operation in in Syrian war. That was to finance the Mujahideens in Afghanistan to to fight the Soviets, and and, and and but the rift happened after the end of the Cold War because because for for U.S. is all its allies are expendable. <laughs> the, you know the Pakistan's use became uh, uh, not as important when the Soviet Union collapsed. And this is when U.S. slapped sanction on Pakistan for its nuclear testing, for for building its missiles, 
uh, with help of China. And, and, and that pushed Pakistan closer and closer to the Chinese orbit. And, and, but, but, but Pakistan still have to rely large part on IMF loans. And this is one big leverage that the West have on, on in Pakistan. They, you know, the, um, um, before Pakistan was very close to the West, it was buying F-16s from the United States. Uh, one of the sanctions U.S. levy on Pakistan was actually withholding delivery of F-16s after the Pakistan have paid for them, right? And, <laughs> and, and so, 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 yeah, so, you know, Pakistan military wasn't happy about that. That pushed them further together with China. So, so Chinese inter, non-intervention policy says, you know, we don't, we don't interfere into the domestic politics, which it does on the surface. It looks like it leaves a free room for CIA, for the United States to do whatever they want. But the interventionist policy also is not get China itself entangled in the domestic politics of other nations, like in this case, Pakistan. So Pakistan, there's there's two factions. There's the Imran Khan's faction, and there's the Pakistani military. They were at the loggerheads, and the Pakistani military had to go ahead with the United States the, the, with their blessing, remove Imran Khan. And but if you look at Pakistan's foreign policy after the removal of Imran Khan. They did not immediately jump into the arms of NATO. You know, all the policies that piloted by, by Imran Khan about uh, doing business with Russia still continue. Um, you know, Pakistan still continue to buy food and oil from Russia. And, and Pakistan still continue its cooperation with China. So I think the U.S. Uh, influence is limited. They 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 may be able to do uh, do things as you know give their go ahead to the Pakistan military to remove Imran Khan, but um, so far I don't see a fundamental shift in the Pakistan establishment's foreign policy. Um, they I, I think because I think the the the, the Pakistan's uh, 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 foreign policy orientation that's a secular shift. Toward um, toward the east rather than towards the west because the west has been pushing them away for so long. Um, you know, if, if, if anything, China, Chinese are very patient. They're very patient. They're willing to wait and see and let things play out. You know, um, and so I I think uh, I think that's what the, the attitudes are adopting toward Pakistan right now. It's the, the wait and see, and in the meantime. They are strengthening um, their own economic investment in the country. Uh, you know, the Pakistan, the China-Pakistan economic corridor is one of the flagstone project, uh, flagship project of the of, of Belt and Road Initiative. So China is still building power plants, roads in Pakistan, all the infrastructure Pakistan needs. This is how China ties China and Pakistan together, um, not some like political uh mechanician at the top uh because i, I think the momentum um you know that the the, 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 the pakistan's yeast shift momentum is already set um uh, so this is my 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 two cents on this, this okay topic. um putin's shirt and Mehdi, a channel members uh Mehdi wanted me to ask you the question that putin's shirt says and it says modi just had a summit with sleepy joe I think Modi gave the U.S. permission to use Indian military bases. Do either of you know anything about this? Before you answer that, didn't India sign a, a, a basing agreement with the United States a few years ago and then double down on it recently? Um, so India right now, they are in the position of where China was in the late in the 1980s. So you know, if people remember Nixon, Her Her Nixon visit to China, uh, the main rationale is to play the China card against the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. So United States think they can do the same thing by playing India against China. Now, with a caveat is that the Indian um, elite, you know, as much as beholden there to the West. 
they're also very proud people. They because India they came from an ancient civilization. They see themselves as a great power. They don't want to be seen as palms、uh, of anyone.、Uh, you know, they don't want to be a vassal state to the United States. So India will always carry out foreign policy. That it sees best fit for India's for、uh, national interest. So, which means at this point, India is still a member nation of the BRICS, but it's also a member of the Quad. So they are trying to get the both deal from the both sides. I mean, which is you know, I totally understandable. I I totally respect the hustle, and and so 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 they are getting military technology. Uh, and、uh, you know, weapon platform from from United States, and at the same time, they are trying to reap the economic benefit by being involved as part of the BRICS nations. Which you know, I I understand the hustle, man. I understand. You know, you try to get the vote, but、uh, but but I I don't. So I don't think India will necessarily tilt too far to one side or or the other. They will try to get the best deal for themselves. So, so yes, they will. They will be.、Um, they they may allow U.S. military to make port calls to India, for example, in、um, allow U.S. Navy to play、uh, to to do port because right now、uh, United States is very much like to control the Indian Ocean, you know, because Indian Ocean links Middle East Africa with China. Right,、mm-hmm. so so U.S. is very concerned about growth of Chinese Navy. So 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 this is why United States felt is has to part partner up with India because India's strategic location sitting right in the center of the Indian Ocean.、Um, so so U.S. is hoping to gain basing、uh, agreement with India so U.S. Navy can can project power.、Um, I think that that. India may allow that、uh, to a limited extent, but not to the extent that、uh, you know India will become, say, the next Japan or South <laughs> Korea, or you know, like because they they will,、uh, you know, the, 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 for for those countries, if USA jump, they have to say how high, <laughs> and <laughs> India can make the calculations like you know what we're still going to buy Russian oil because why not? It's it's a good deal for us.、Um, So I, I think that's what's going on. India is doing a balance, playing a balancing game. Now,、um, there's another question in there, but I want to preface this question with another one of my questions.、Um, why is it? Why is the America so、um, in an uproar over a supposed Chinese base? I believe in Cambodia,、um, but I think it's in Cambodia. But the base that they're、um, all up in arms about was a base that the United States used to. Used to occupy, and、um, also Medi says, is most of the current Indian oligarchy from the old money. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the people have to have have a historical perspective. During my dog is going crazy because、um, there's a farmer walking out and he doesn't like it. He's he's <laughs> there's he thinks he owns all this territory.、Um, hey, my chickens and, do that in the morning time when I'm when I'm doing shows. <laughs> the chickens are like going crazy. My 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 dog is acting like the United States right now. <laughs> <laughs> you think he owns the world, <laughs> and、uh, and so so right now.、Um, Uh, uh, putting a historical perspective, during the Vietnam War, the South China Sea was basically American lake. U.S. had air base and naval base in the Philippines. They had naval air base in South Vietnam.、Um, they had base in Thailand. So, so like they they had what's called a Yankee Station, which is this flotilla of U.S. aircraft carrier and the U.S. fleet that was permanently floating around South China Sea. Um, at that time, China couldn't do anything about it. You know, China, 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 China barely had a had a blue navy. No, didn't have a blue water navy back then. And and but today,、um, one of the reason why U.S. is so upset about China in South China Sea is that it, it, it's not no longer American lake. In fact, America, U.S. Navy have to do their so-called freedom of navigation just to show their presence. Like, yeah, we can still be here.、Um, whereas, like, back in nineteen, you know, just before I was born, they used to like run around that place like they own the own the whole whole、uh, uh, own the whole whole sea. So, 
So it's under against this economic, uh, this historical development. They're upset that China is having a friendly tie with Cambodia, which which China has always done because um, during the Vietnam War, when United States supported the Cambodian military dictatorship under Lot Nong, um, the, the Cambodian king, the Prince uh, Sihanouk, Nook, went to took refuge in China. He stayed in Beijing. And 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 you know through that friendship, you know China post Vietnam War um, after nineteen after nineteen ninety after the UN brokered uh, a peace deal in Cambodia, China were able to come back and and continue to maintain a friendship with Cambodia. Cambodia is one of the China's closest. Uh, ally in Southeast Asia, uh, and China is building up the Cambodian infrastructure, building the port. So, the the, the, the report the, the, the reports about Chinese military base in Cambodia right now only is only exists in the Western media. So, I I'm gonna take a, a a pinch of salt with that because right now the only confirmed Chinese military overseas Chinese military base is a supply base for Chinese Navy in Djibouti. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for for the because the Chinese Navy participated in the international patrol around the Red Sea area, um, and so 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 they they needed supply base, and and Djibouti was strategically located at the Horn of Africa, um, but Cambodia, they, China, what we know is China is building a port for Cambodia, and what U.S. media is saying. That port can also be used to host the Chinese Navy. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe we don't know. Um, uh, and and what they really don't like is the fact that U.S. influence is gradually being pushed out of South China Sea since the 1970s, since since the the, the end of the the, the the Vietnam War. You know, uh, right now United States is actually trying to come back. You know, they they got kicked out of the Philippines in the 1990s. The 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 the, the, Philippine, the Philippine government said no, we don't, we're not going to extend your 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 uh, air base at the you know the Clark Air Base. We're not going to extend your naval base. So right now they're trying to come back to the Philippines by playing up the China threat. So we're going to see how far they they get away with that. Um, but but they yeah they are upset because um, they don't call the shots anymore. Mm -hmm. Um. Real Truth Talk wants to know what do you think of XRP, which uh, is XRP. A, 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 a crypto. Oh, crypto! I, I have no opinions. On crypto. <laughs> I, I'm not. I, I'm. I'm not an investor in crypto, so I have not. No. 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 I. I stay within 
you know what Warren Buffett calls the circle of competence. That the crypto is outside of my circle of competence. So I, I, if you ask me about China, I can talk talk to you all about China, but I have no opinion on crypto. Uh, Ace Hampton says, "Great rapport between the two of you." Red Pill and Carl are quickly becoming a new favorite. Well, thank you. We both say thank, thank you, you on that one. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, electronic surveillance systems to gather data from Chinese transmissions, radar bands. This, that is why we want to be in Pakistan. Well, that's why the United States want to be everywhere. They want to monitor yes. everybody and everything to suppress any emerging power or combination of powers. I'm looking at the time and we've had him long enough. Hey, Carl, Carl and I are supposed to um, do a, a recording uh, when he's free on a, uh, a while from now um, for you guys and we'll play it um, as if it's live. Um, but we will have him back live on the show if he would come back. I mean, I love talking to this guy. Like, I can talk, Carl, I can talk to you all day about the situation that's going on over there in Asia, man, because that is a I mean, everything is shifting from west to east, and it's best to be informed about these things that are going on instead of having the Western press propagandize you on these things. In closing, what do you have to say to to the viewers and the uh, and the people that will listen and view later? Well, thank you, Rashi, for inviting me. You know, it's a, it's a pleasure. You invite me anytime. I love to talk. So I can, I can go on for, I can talk for hours. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just, you know, talking about geopolitics, talking about China is well my passion. So, you know, I can, I can go on all day. Um, uh, it's, uh, it, it's a pleasure. I mean, it's, it's good to know that, 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 that the audience are, are appreciate what we do here. Um, and I, I, I hope uh, we, we continue this, um, you know, we continue this into the future. Uh, yeah, man. I would love fun. to do this, man. I would love to do this with you um, constantly. I, like I said, you shed light on certain things, especially certain things that I'm not aware of over an agent and things like that. And you give a, a, a in-depth perspective. And I think the people who are watching are learning and, and, and feeding off that and they're growing mentally so that they're not propagandized off of. The western press man again from my heart to your ears man i really appreciate everything thank you rashi thank you i'll talk to you later man be safe be blessed um and and keep your wife safe too man i <laughs> <laughs> appreciate it thank you very much all right <laughs> goodbye everybody all right everybody we thank call for joining us again on the red pill diaries i thank each and every one of you for giving us the time because we've been on here for over two hours I told you we were going to come back and we'll try to defeat the the um the system and try to defeat the algorithm and we're going to have call on a um pre-recording uh pre-recorded um program and then we're going to have him back on here. The pre-recorded will be released to members um channel members and patrons members first and then it'll be released on YouTube. Also we're going to have him live live back on the program. And um, I thank you all for giving me another hour of your day and another day of your time. Time is the most precious and most valued commodity. Um, know that I love you, but always remember that God will always love you best. Until we next speak again, stay strong, stay true, but above all things, stay righteous. Hey, mama, your baby boy loves you more than life. Deuces, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on the most powerful platform for truth anywhere on God's earth. I'm out.